Hey, this is Nick Olson, the host of Chalk is Cheap Podcast, and you're listening to a Legend Series episode highlight, the series of episodes where we talk to the legends of Twin Ports Pool. To hear this entire episode and to learn more about our show, you can visit chalkischeappod.com. That's chalkischeappod.com. That, that's kind of a hot button topic, especially uh, in the area, but I'm sure uh, across the country uh, when it comes to uh, pool, uh, especially pocket pool and handicapping. And I think, you know, there's organizations and, and different places across the country that are trying to come up with a way that uh, suits everyone that includes everyone. And, you know, we've, we've had guys on the show now, uh, you know, uh, comes to mind right away, Scott Orville on episode four, he said, you know, we didn't have handicapping. We played it. He compared it to the school of hard knocks. You paid to play. If you lost, you lost. There was no handicapping. And he kind of said it, it made him and, and the guys in your era better players. I guess, what, what's your thoughts on handicapping today? And are you kind of in the same uh, boat as Scott Orville where, you know, handicapping maybe doesn't make you improve as fast as, as playing straight up pool did back in your day? Well, but now there's handicapping, but there was, like I said, there's, there was kind of handicapping back. You knew somebody was better than you. They'd have to spot you something. And he went back and forth on that until you figured, okay, that seems like a fair, and it's, it would be a handicap. You're spotting somebody some balls. Um, now, it's, like, it's really tough with the handicapping. Um, oh boy, I'm, put, I'm trying to figure out how to put this. If you don't have a handicap system, then you're not going to get people to play. I mean, nobody's going to go to a tournament when they know that they're going to lose out right away. So it's just a way to kind of balance the talent and try to make a fair game of it, which we were trying to do back when we were kids. All right. Now, I guess for that reason, I I can't be against the handicapping. We had tried to make it as fair as possible. You hear all the horror stories about guys sneaking into tournaments and, um, yeah, well, that's kind of the way it goes. Yes, it made us better players because if you were playing somebody, they would never give you what they'd never give you a spot that, to really try to make it even. So you had to make your game better. And then at some point they'd say, well, I'm not spotting you that many balls anymore kind of thing. So, yeah, it, 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 it made you toughen up and tr- actually try to get better. The, the whole thing now, and, and that's a question that comes up all the time. Are people just satisfied with their handicap so they'll just stay where they are? Right. Um, knowing, boy, I'm getting a pretty good spot off this guy. So, yeah, there's back and forth. But if you're going to get participation in pool, you've got to come up with some handicapping system. And like the Fargo rate they have now, boy, that seems pretty fair. I know Jeff on his Wednesday night league has figured out a pretty good formula, and it seems pretty fair that you actually – you have got to play well to beat a guy with his handicap. So you actually have to try hard. Where years ago in Valley, the handicap was so silly, unfair. I mean, it's like, I'm this number, they're that number, but it wasn't close to reality. I think the newer handicaps that Jeff came up with in the Fargo race and the stuff they use in MA just makes it, you, you actually have to play well to beat the guy. You don't, You can't just lollygag around because i know i'll beat him anyway kind of thing 